Yo, 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 what is happening, guys? Welcome back to the Technical Effects YouTube channel. This week's Technical Insights is episode 63. Um, pleasure to have you here. And guys, trust me, I read all of your comments in the YouTube. There's just so many of you to get back to. But trust me, I really do appreciate all of your kind words. Not forgetting that structure is king. So many comments with that and I really appreciate it, okay? So the structure is the base of the market. It's the number one thing that I always focus on and everything actually comes back down to the structure of the market. Whether it be support resistance, rejection points, whatever it is, patterns, Elliott waves, all of these things, consolidation patterns, it is all in the market structure from the higher time frames down, okay? So in this week's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the US dollar, um, Euro USD, Euro Yen, GB Pound Yen, and AUD USD. Those are the markets that we're going to be taking a look at in this session. Now, I hope you guys had a great week last week. If you didn't, make sure that you reflect, review, see where you what you missed, why price went to where it went to. Trust me, price heads to a re heads to an area for a reason. There's always a reason why price is heading to an area or where price is going to go. Okay, so if you did have losses, work out why. Why did price go to where it went to? And that is how you learn. Um, so let's get into this episode. All right, episode 63. So taking a look, as I mentioned, starting off with the US dollar. Um, let's take a look at the higher time frames here because the weekly time frame, as I highlighted to you previously, came into this significant area down here where we Previously, saw price show an accumulation um, in this range. Why was it an accumulation? Because we had downside range upside. Change of direction shows accumulation to the upside. So we've had that move there um, where price took a strong bullish push to the upside from that region. Price came back into this region again. Has stalled. Last week, we saw a bit of a bullish hammer. This week, we're seeing bit of a continuational bullish candle, bit of indecisive. Um, so it means we're going to need to break this down into the lower time frame to see where price could be heading. Now, we need to bear in mind that we've not seen a retracement, deep retracement in this market for quite some time. Since back here in August, when price took this retracement here, um, August into September, we've not really seen too much of a deep retracement since then, and we could be due one off of this area of support. So we may see price take a retracement off this support, and then we may see price roll over. A lot of people, because we rejected support, will think that the support is just going to hold. Okay, it's just going to hold. We saw uh, previously really strong rally from this area. We're definitely going to see it again, and that isn't always the case. So it's always good to keep an eye on the structure of the market. Now, just taking a look here at the daily time frame of what I'm currently seeing in um, the US dollar, I'm seeing the potential here for a higher low point, okay? Because price here took this push to the upside, didn't break this lower high, but has stalled here at this region at around 11650. Price has stalled at this region, failed to break below this um, once, twice, three, many, many times price failing to really break below, get below that area. And if we're now able to break above this point here, which is around 11750, 117, then we will be looking for a short term, a bit more further upside movement is what I'm going to be looking for. So bringing it back into the four hour time frame and just taking a look at what we've seen happen with the structure flow, um, we've seen the market take this downside move. We then saw price have this lower high here. Price, what did it do? Price violated this. Pretty strong move to the upside as well. We then saw price come back to the downside. Uh, price didn't break this higher low. So we can see this higher low here has not been breached. We did not break this higher low. Price then showed a double rejection, um, creating this sort of potential lower high here if price did push through this area of higher low, but price failed to break below this point. So the fact that price failed to break below that point shows us that price is more intently here looking to head to the upside now. Um, we've broken above this lower high point through here, and we're looking for the continuation to the upside. Now, from the higher time frames, remember, uh, I mentioned the possibility of that higher low, so we can go from this low into this high, where we can look for a retracement. We go into the daily time frame. This is where it becomes pretty interesting, because we can see here that the 61.8 price came back into this point, and we can see push below, 
closed above, pushed below, closed above, pushed below, closed above, showing that this point here is actually a significant point. On Friday, we saw price take the upside push, um, which has engulfed these previous two daily candles, you can see. So now I'm interested to see whether we're going to get this continuation above this high. If we get the continuation above this high, which is our 0% area, then I'm going to be looking for price to at least make its way back into around 11850 before then price needing to make a decision whether it's going to break through, continue higher for a weekly retracement. Because remember, this here is the daily this is the daily lower high. If we break above the daily lower high, we're more than likely going to see price take a weekly retracement. Whereas at the moment, this for me is only a daily retracement. So I'm looking for price to potentially break above this high right here um, to then potentially pull back to then continue into around 11850. Price broken above this lower high here as well, giving us that confluence to the upside. Um, we've also got the FIB movement here to the upside as well. Looking for this to continue. We may see a slight dip before the continuation just to fill some of that gap there on the daily candle. But I will be looking for price to potentially come all the way back into around 11850. We do obviously have to bear in mind other areas where price could stall. Okay, so price does have this area here, which again aligns with that minus 27.2 FIB extension pretty nicely. Um, this will also fall in line when we take a look at Euro USD and also AUD USD. We're, we're seeing some potential downside in those markets. And if we're seeing downside potential in those markets, well, we're more than likely going to be seeing upside in the dollar because of the correlation. Okay, remember that. That's why we look at the dollar to see whether the dollar is showing a strength or weakness. That's the whole point of looking at the dollar. So that's my there. That's my view there of the dollar. I'm actually looking for some upside. Unless we do take a dip to the downside, start breaking through structures, then I would look for the downside move. Euro USD. We're clearing barriers here. Daily time frame here is actually um, just breaking through that 1.2 level. Now, if we take a look here on the daily time frame we can see that price has actually broken through some daily structures. It hasn't broken this area just yet, but I can see this potentially coming a bit, bit more to the downside. Uh, we took this extremely large push here to the upside where price then started to be squeezed, as you should be able to see right there. Price was squeezed before. Now we're seeing pretty impulsive move to the downside. So I'm looking for this to actually continue to the downside. Uh, first area that I would be looking for is around 1.19, 1 500. So you can see that there's actually quite a big gap there for price to head from here to the downside. We had this strong impulsive move here. This impulsive move started right here. So at that region, we may show a rejection. And if we look left, we can see his previous structure points all through here as well. So that is my area of interest to see price down into. And that is where I'm looking for price to come into. And if price is going to come back into... Um, let's just open this up just so you guys can see it a bit more. If price is going to come back into around this level here of 1.19, as I mentioned, then we're more than likely most definitely able to see a lot more further upside here within the dollar. Okay, because dollar strength helps Euro USD to the downside. So we're more than likely going to see a lot more upside. We can see here that we had this large downside push showing the intent of direction there to the downside. Last week... Because price hadn't really confirmed breaking through some of the structure points, I was looking at the possibility of some upside after price did show a manipulation spike below these equal lows through here. We had the down move to quick up move. I was looking at the possibility of the upside move, but we didn't really get the continuation um, of the structure shift because the market here, we have the high. Um, we then got a minor lower high. We've then got this lower high. We then got, we had minor lower uh, area there of resistance. Price didn't really manage to get it move on and shift structure back to the upside to be able to have taken that buy position there to the upside. So we didn't get that continuation. We're now breaking through these points. Just take a look here of the, all these clean moves, clean candles here to the downside. No real traffic. So I'm going to be looking for price after breaking through one, two, one which is what price is doing now. I'll be looking for a partial corrective retracement. So right now we're seeing impulse. I will look for a partial corrective retracement to be able to see price continue to the downside and potentially make its way into 1.19. I take each barrier as they come. So I'll take 1.2, then look at 1.9. But I am actually looking for Euro USD to continue further to the downside, which falls in line with the US dollar push to the upside. And don't get me wrong, guys. There is 
times when I'm wrong. And if price decides here that it's going to take a, a U-turn and price takes a big push to the upside, starts breaking through structures, and we start to see higher high and we start to then see higher lows, I'm going to change my bias because the overall bigger picture here on the higher time frames is bullish. But right now, my lower time frame biased short term is shorts, okay, bearish market. So I will always always have in the back of my mind that the market on the higher time frames is still bullish. But at the moment, I can see the potential of price coming into that uh, daily zone of 1.19 here to the downside is what I'm looking for. Euro yen um, as well. We had this large range here. We had a bit of a spike above this range. Price then failed to show the continuation uh, to the upside there. We're seeing some pretty heavy bearish movement to the downside. We're breaking through lots of structure points here. You can see this structure point here has been broken. Um, this here as well got broken. We also then saw this level here also get broken. And if you just take a look left, you can see that there was pretty clean move after price has broken through all of these higher low points and structure points. There is pretty clean move to the downside. The yen is also pushing strongly to the upside. Um, so I'm looking for price here to First of all, to come into this area here of 125. At 125, I believe we will see some sort of reaction, possibly some sort of retracement. We've broken some daily structure here. So if we are to break through 125, then we could very well bring price all the way back down into around, um, let's just go into the four hour time frame just so I can see a bit better. Yeah, we could very well bring price um, back down into this area just through here to start with, which is 124500. After that, we've got this area just here, 123500 as well, that price could very well stall at here um, for price to come back into. So again, I would look for lower highs. I always sell at lower highs and buy at higher lows. So I would be looking for some sort of retracement after this heavy downside move to be able to get into a trading opportunity. But I do see potential further downside movement in this market now, now that we're breaking through structures. Last week on Instagram, I did mention the possibility of price continuing to the upside. And when I posted that, price was actually um, price was actually around this region right here. I was looking for the possibility of price shifting in structure. So a push to the upside, high, 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 low and continuation. We didn't get that move and you can forecast the move, be prepared for the move. But if the move doesn't happen, then no trades happen. Okay, we then saw price start to break through this structure. We saw price break through these structures. Once we started to break through these structures, bias changes. Okay, you need to adapt and react to the market conditions. And that is exactly what you have to do. And that is exactly what we've done here because we're now looking for the potential downside movement here within Euro Yen. Um, GJ hasn't really shown so much of a downside move. Price here still is at the moment bullish. Um, we did have a small range up here, which looks to be a distribution because price pushed to the upside, took a slight range. We're now pushing to the downside, um, which shows distribution of positions so that price can now continue a bit lower. And if we just take a look through here, um, we do have quite a bit of clean candle movement just through here that price could very well come and react in. And we've also got these uh, sort of equal lows here at this point that price may very well come and take out. We've also got this area here, which was pretty clean. So I'm expecting price to at least fill this area here. After that, if we manage to break through this area, then it will be nice. So I'll, something like this, price to break through that low. Corrective move to the upside, then being able to take the shorts to the downside. Um, we could very well come into 137 to the downside. I would first of all look for my target to be around this area just here at 139. Pretty nice area to target. So I'll be looking for corrective retracements. Corrective retracements are always nice. You can even see up here in this box range that price did actually show and uh, gave an idea of where price was looking to go. We saw an intent bearish four hour candle right there um, and just take a look at how long price after that so one four hour candle brought us all the way down into this area look how many four hour candles it actually took for price to actually get back up into this area okay several several four hour candles before then rolling over to the downside look how price actually pushed off from this level really clean candles as well so the candles can give you a very clear indication of where price is looking to go. And you're actually going to see that now in um, Euro, uh, AUD, USD, sorry, which is the last market of the update. Um, so reviewing this from last week, previously, I mentioned some downside movement previously when we saw this move happen. Why? Well, again, we had strong clean candles to the downside. 
It took Price quite a while to correctively retrace this move to the upside. Look how long it took Price to get back up into this same area that it took two candles to get into. And it was a very corrective move. And after that corrective move, we see impulsive move to the downside again. Then if we take a zoom out and we just re readjust our eyes, sometimes it's good just to look away from the charts and then look back again, just so you can reset your eyes on what you're looking for. We can actually see that this move here to the downside was pretty clean and strong. Okay, took about six candles for price to actually get down into this area. Look how many candles it took for price to actually close this area back to the upside. Took several, several very corrective movement. Push up, pull down, push up, pull down, push up, pull down, push up. And then we're, now we're seeing the intent direction, clean candles, pushing price to the downside. So all I'm going to be now looking for in this pair is pretty much just a bit of a corrective retracement on the one hour time frame to look for sales, to bring price back into this area here to close the gap that we've got in that push to the upside there. And that is roughly around my target, 0 0.76, 0 0.7, uh, 76200. And again, this falls in line with the dollar analysis because we're looking for possible dollar further upside, which would help AU push to the downside, okay? So that is currently what I'm looking at. And you can just see here, impulse push, Corrective retracement, impulse push. We had the same back here, impulse push. We then had this corrective retracement, impulse push. So when you're looking for the retracements, this is what you want to be looking for. The intent of price. How is price flowing? Did price impulsively push somewhere? Because that shows intent of direction. If it then impulsively pushes the other way, then it shows that it could have been some manipulation. But if we get impulsive push, then a corrective move, this shows that price, the corrective move shows that price isn't really intently moving in that direction. And we could very well soon intently push in the other direction that we already intently pushed in. Okay, so again, a little knowledge bomb there for you guys to go back, go into the charts and study with in terms of the impulse and corrective moves right there. Um, they are pretty powerful. And um, that is my um, technical insights, episode 63 of pretty much what I'm looking at for the next week. We've got Euro, Euro, Euro USD looking for possible downside, Euro Yen as well, GB Pound Yen, a lot of downside potentials for next week, to be honest with you. The dollar's pushing, the yen's pushing. So listen to what is happening in the um, in the current in the main currencies are they showing strength are they showing weakness and again use that towards your bias um, to help you in terms of the direction that you're looking for pairs to head in um, and also in line with the structure okay you want to keep it in line with the structure that the markets are showing you so guys i appreciate you guys tuning in um it, remember guys this is only the second week of 52 weeks of a year if you've had a bad week review it reflect on it put it to the side a lot of people let one bad week crumble don't let it crumble you guys remember we all have good weeks we all have bad weeks we all have break even weeks it happens the most important most important part is that at the end of the year okay your edges played out that is the most important part your edges played out and you've made profit from the markets from consistently doing and repeating the same thing over and over again if you don't repeat the same thing over and over again you won't ever have an edge you need to repeat the same process over and over again or you won't have an edge. So guys, again, give give us a like, subscribe, leave a comment. I read them all, guys. Trust me, and I appreciate your kind words. Your kind words is what gets me up to come into the office on a Saturday morning and bring you guys technical insights. So it really does mean a lot to me. Um, and thank you once again. Hope you guys have a great week next week. Let's see what the dollar's going to do.